As we said, the president uh, was putting out another video, and he just has. Uh, we have obtained it from the White House. I'll play it. I would like to begin by addressing the heinous attack on the United States Capitol. Like all Americans, I am outraged by the violence, lawlessness, and mayhem. I immediately deployed the National Guard and federal law enforcement to secure the building and expel the intruders. America is and must always be a nation of law and order. The demonstrators who infiltrated the Capitol have defiled the seat of American democracy. To those who engaged in the acts of violence and destruction, you do not represent our country. And to those who broke the law, you will pay. We have just been through an intense election, and emotions are high. But now, tempers must be cooled and calm restored. We must get on with the business of America. My campaign vigorously pursued every legal avenue to contest the election results. My only goal was to ensure the integrity of the vote. In so doing, I was fighting to defend American democracy. I continue to strongly believe that we must reform our election laws to verify the identity and eligibility of all voters and to ensure faith and confidence in all future elections. Now Congress has certified the results. A new administration will be inaugurated on January 20th. My focus now turns to ensuring a smooth, orderly, and seamless transition of power. This moment calls for healing and reconciliation. 2020 has been a challenging time for our people. A menacing pandemic has upended the lives of our citizens, isolated millions in their homes, damaged our economy, and claimed countless lives. Defeating this pandemic and rebuilding the greatest economy on Earth will require all of us working together. It will require a renewed emphasis on the civic values of patriotism, faith, charity, community, and family. We must revitalize the sacred bonds of love and loyalty that bind us together as one national family. To the citizens of our country, serving as your president has been the honor of my lifetime. And to all of my wonderful supporters, I know you are disappointed, but I also want you to know that our incredible journey is only just beginning. Thank you, God bless you, and God bless America. Okay, uh, just over two minutes there, the President of the United States, 30 hours after what happened, coming out on tape, not speaking live, um, calling it an outrage, the mayhem, the desecration, reading from a prompter there. Um, he did, uh, notably, uh, say that the election had been certified and that a new administration would uh, be taking over on January 20th. He, of course, did not use Joe Biden's name. He did not uh, formally concede. Uh, he did say, of course, that the journey was just beginning with his supporters. This is, though, very different than what he said yesterday. Uh, my panel is with me. So, Dana, what's your uh, reaction uh, to this as, as, as we hear it now? Well, it is obviously a very different tone. Y yeah. You asked about uh, what's going on inside the White House, the fact that there was a lot of pressure on him and has been a lot of pressure on him uh, for, from the very few people who remain around him, some of whom had wanted to resign and have been uh, asked not to resign to try to keep him as, as, as sort of, you know, on target as he possibly can be. Um, so, yes, he, for the first time, accepted the reality that there will be a new president, uh, mm -hmm. claimed that he wants a peaceful transition because he was begged to do that after the violence that it took lives, uh, violence that he incited. But there's just, you know, there are a couple things we need to call out. The most egregious, Aaron, is at the beginning, where he talked about the fact that he immediately deployed the National right. Guard. No, yeah, he didn't. Not true. Not only did he not immediately deploy the National Guard, you had his vice president, who he wasn't talking to, um, in a secure location after he was whisked off the Senate floor, uh, being called by the Republican and Democratic leadership in Congress saying, where is the National Guard? We cannot get this under control. And it was the vice president who had to make an additional call to the Pentagon to say, we need help. So that is a total lie. And, and the other thing I will just say, just uh, in terms of the mechanics of this, he put this video on Twitter. So I said before he, he can't tweet, 
it seems as though his Twitter account is back.